Hello, dear friends. My name is Olga Paukste, and I'm the creator of the Global Fashion Workshop channel. We organized space for those who want to acquire unique knowledge in sewing and learn to make one-of-a-kind clothes, our very own English club. We have many useful videos by Irina Paukste, including lectures and Q&As, as well as lessons from the Fashion Workshop channel divided according to their themes. We have collections on how to work with flax fabric and all kinds of pants. Subscribe to our channel and join our Fashion Workshop Club. Hello and welcome to the Global Fashion Workshop channel. Today we're making an elastic waistband for our sweatpants. There are so many questions. How to sew in the elastic so it won't twist, how to attach the waistband to the pants, and how to organize this process. We decided to show it today. The thing is, we can't show you the full process, so I'll show you what was done behind the scene. After we make the side seams, the inside seams, and the middle seam, I'll put one pant leg into the other and make them even. Because it's a knit fabric, in the process it often gets twisted and altered somehow. Now, here we have a perfectly straight line. It can be a bit different for you, but still, it shouldn't jump up and down. It should be a beautiful straight line. That's what's necessary to do. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Now, I'll take out the pins and we'll continue working on it. That's what I wanted to show. And also the next thing. Last time we cut out the waistband. Here's the waistband. It's folded in half and stitched. We left a hole here for the elastic. I don't think a separate video is needed for it. And since I want a decorative shoelace to go along the waistband, I had to prepare the area around the holes. Two holes meant for a beautiful shoelace. The waistband is as wide as the pants. The first thing we have to do is attach the waistband to the pants. To do it, we find the seam on the waistband. It's the only one there. Connect it to the center back, pin it, baste it, and then stitch it using an overlock sewing machine. The last step will be stitching the elastic that's already inside the waistband. Put all the layers together and not to let the elastic get twisted. To do this more comfortably, we can separately draw straight lines to follow on the waistband and the pants before connecting them. Now look, the elastic is seven centimeters wide. Taking seams into account, the waistband is eight centimeters wide. A seam takes away, I'll change my hold so you can see. One centimeter here. I washed the ruler with soap so the fabric won't get dirty. One centimeter is for the seam, so we're left with seven centimeters. Right in the middle, three and a half centimeters from there, we have grommets. So I suggest and consider seven centimeters. Mark with these lines two centimeters from the top and the bottom of it. And right in the middle of that, in the middle part, there should be a grommet. Now, I'll draw these lines along the length of the waistband and then we can start basting. So, we get one centimeter left for the seam, two centimeters down from the top, and two centimeters up from this new line. We draw a nice straight line along the waistband. Because when the elastic is inside, it'll be very hard to do. Now I'll do it on the whole of the waistband. That's how our trousers, our sweatpants, look now. I basted the waistband to the pants, attached the center front part, connected the center back to the middle stitch of the waistband, and now the most important thing is to remember that we, that after we use the sewing machine, we shouldn't iron the fabric. If we try ironing it, all the lines will disappear. We'll iron it at the very end. 
Now I'll use the sewing machine to sew the waistband and the rest of the garment together. Here's what we have. We've sewn the garment and the waistband together using the machine. Now we need to put the elastic band in. Look, it's seven centimeters wide. There's two millimeters left here that we couldn't cut. It goes into the waistband width. When it's too tight, it's not good. No space for the elastic to move. When it's not tight enough, it's not good either. It's fine if there's one to two millimeters of freedom left. I use a special device to put the elastic through the waistband. I measured the elastic already. There's going to be a seam one and a half centimeters away from the corner on it. Now I put in the elastic through the hole made for it on the center back. I'll turn it this way. It'll be more comfortable like that. I'm left-handed after all. making it sit right. Soon you'll find out how to keep the elastic from twisting. This elastic sure is very stiff, but the pants have enough volume so it'll look nice in the end. And now, to stitch the elastic, we need to get out from both sides enough elastic to comfortably use the machine. I've planned the seam to be one and a half centimeters away on both sides. That's why I measure three centimeters. See? Pin it with a couple of pins. The overlap, as you can see, is three centimeters. If there had been a seam, there would be one and a half centimeters left for it on both sides. But we don't need it to be too thick here. Apparently, it's more comfortable for me to do it from the inner side. I'll move the pins to the inner side. Now I'll just sew the pants from the elastic band together. You can say I'm making a back stitch on the elastic. The next step is to sew this hole closed. It has to be a blind stitch. You can do it without even sewing or pinning anything. Just the stitch and that's all. Now I'll finish the stitch and when it comes, and then comes the most interesting part. The next step, we need to baste all the layers of the waistband together when it's stretched out. For the waistband to stretch evenly, we need to put some pins on the side seams. As well as on the center back and the center front. Here's the side seam. At least one pin, and on the center front. And the same goes for the center back. Checking it. Now the hardest part starts, basting. We can't baste it right here where the line is because we'll be sewing there. Instead, we can do it higher or lower than where the line is. That's where we should baste it. To do it, we secure the garment on the table with our dominant hand. Press one side and start basting the other, the stretched side. 
Well, you can also find someone to help you. Piece by piece, we'll baste all the layers together. Remember to stretch the garment when basting and don't tighten it when you're moving to the next part. It all should be the way it was when it's stretched. I think I've explained well enough how to baste it now, the way it has to be done. The thread should be loose enough so it won't move when stretched out. That's because if the thread tightens, we won't be able to use the machine in the stretched out state. Then unwanted folds are inevitable. As you can see, here we have a pin to secure the side seam. Of course, we need to stretch it out too. This is the way I do the basting here. Finish with the first line and do the same with the second one. Do you see it? Let me show you. That's the result we need to get. Here I finished with the basting. It ended up just perfect. Now it's time for stitching. I'll start from the center back, the lower line first, and then the upper line. Stretch out the garment, do the back stitch. The back stitch is necessary, and in this stretched out state. We put all the waistband layers together and secured the elastic so it won't twist. Notice how the middle part is bigger to let the presser foot easily go around the grommets? Now I'm finishing the first seam. Behind the scenes, I'll do the same with the second one. Then I'll clean the basting. The only thing left will be putting the shoelace inside. That's the waistband we get. And the final touch, putting in the shoelace. Fortunately, the shoelace already has metal aglets, so no pins or devices are needed for that. Simply put it in. Well, even putting the shoelace in isn't as easy as it seems. And to make such sweatpants, it takes a lot of effort. Of course, garments like these cost a lot, too. They aren't just knitwear pants with ready-made elastic made using a cover stitch machine. The waistband of our sweatpants is ready. Congratulations. Now you know how to make them yourself. Your pants will look just as fancy as any of those from a luxury brand. That's it for today's video. This has been the Global Fashion Workshop Channel. All the best from Olga Paukste and the rest of our team. Subscribe to our channel. Click the like button and don't forget to comment as to what else you would like to see on our channel. Bye!